Good morning, everyone. 17 minutes after the hour. Welcome to the Sunrise Show. Craig Kronick in and want to welcome onto the program Elias Egurin. There we go. Elias Egurin. He's a rancher over in Jordan Valley, Eastern Oregon. He's a resident and a citizen of Malheur County there. And it is shocking as you start uncovering what is going on over there peaceful community. I think I've seen the population of 30,000, about 31,000. Literally, it's dropped about 500 in the last few years on population. But I've got Elias on as a Jordan Valley rancher. He is part of the Owyhee Basin Stewardship Coalition. Their website, ourlandourvoice.com. Get on there. It's a one-page website. Sign the petition because why do we want the federal government and President Obama to come in and make a 2.5 million acre wilderness monument out of what exists already as BLM lands. And Elias, thanks for being on the program. Talk about what's going on. Talk about your ranch, the the lands you've got. We'll ask some more questions on how many ranchers are affected over there. But good morning, sir. Thanks for being here. Good morning, Craig, and thank you for having me on. I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, I'm a fifth-generation cattle rancher on the same piece of soil here within Malheur County, the Jordan Valley area. And our operation, uh, we run our cattle on BLM ground with permits uh, for the summer season, basically, April until October. And we're seeing this monument designation as having the potential to endanger that. And that's what these monuments seem to be. They seem to be uh, more restrictions than they are benefits to the land. You know, what's interesting is, I was just talking about this in the earlier segment, is these monuments all the way through Alaska, California, all these different monuments, these wilderness monuments, each one has a different set of rules and regs. It's hard to find what the the rules and the regulations are actually going to change or what they're going to be, but are they going to still allow grazing rights? Well, the Oregon Natural Desert Association and Keen Footwear are the ones who are pushing this. And they uh, assure us that grazing will continue, but they are very slow to give us any details on what level or how we will be able to continue to graze. And uh, each monument is different because of the statement of purpose. Uh, every, every monument, I guess, is different, so the reason for protecting it is different, and that all depends on how that is written up in the statement of purpose that regulates the monument. Uh, now, now uh, these folks are uh, they're pushing this monument, and they're saying that this ground is unprotected, but that's so far from the truth. There are decades of federal regulations that are out there that have been protecting this for decades, um, several layers. You have the Endangered Species Act, Federal Land Management and Policy Act, Nat- National Environmental Protection Act, the list goes on and on, and anything we do out here is managed by the BLM. And it's because of that management that this interest is, that these lands are as healthy and interesting to these folks as they are. Well, here's the thing that's so interesting to me is that there's an incredible working relationship uh, with the BLM, uh, Elias, yourself, all of the ranchers out there. It's a, it's a get along, go along type thing. And, you know, the lands show the work. In fact, Congressman Greg Walden was there over the weekend. You packed house over 300 folks. And what's more amazing, and to our listeners, Malheur County has put out a, a special vote and the vote tally of the five, well, 500, excuse me, 5,666 opposed, 633 in favor. 90% of the county came out against the proposal. And yet, and Congressman Walden, what did he have to say when he was over there this last weekend? Congressman Walden uh, was very clear in his opposition to a monument designation. He sees it as an attack on uh, us who live here and uh, are stewards of the land, and for those who want to come here and recreate in the general multiple use of the land, which is the way that the BLM has uh, been charged with managing it, for multiple use and sustained yield, which means 
were able to do activities as wide and various as possible as long as they sustain uh, the land uh, on a sustainable basis. Exactly. That's going to ta- take this opportunity away. And Wal- Congressman Walden was very sympathetic to our situation, and he's been very supportive from the beginning. Now, it's interesting that we can't get a peep out of uh, United States Senators for the state of Oregon, Senator Wyden or Senator Merkley, no matter how hard they ask, and people have asked them, they just won't make a call either way, correct? That, that has been our experience so far, and that's really the challenge we see in our eyes. Is uh, so, so we asked, we asked Congressman Walden at the town hall meeting in Jordan Valley, what do you recommend that we do? Uh, as the Waihee Basin Stewardship Coalition, as a group of local individuals that represent hunters, and local businessmen, cattle ranchers, city and county government officials, what do we need to do to protect our county and truly protect this land? And his recommendation was education. Yep. Education, education. Let, let folks know what's going on and that this land is truly protected and being taken care of. And I think if we pursue that route, then we will have the opportunity to show our senators that this truly is not the, the desire of most people in the state of Oregon and throughout America. These are public lands that belong to all Americans, not simply those who live here or even within the state of Oregon. Exactly, and you've brought together a great cross-section of, of men and women that are concerned about this. The website is OurLandOurVoice.com, and it's the website for the Hawaii Basin Stewardship Coalition. And you mentioned there's cattlemen, there's hunters, there's businessmen on there, there's um, former city managers on there, former uh, you know retired sheriffs on there, you know, they're all across. Now, before I get to this uh, amazing uh, Rural Fire Protection Agency, I want this is all under the Antiquities Act, and I brought this up. People need to understand. I wonder if Congressman Walden mentioned this. This is absolute political agenda because President Obama would swoop in and make this a wilderness monument under the Antiquities Act from 1906, and it's very short. It's literally a, a page and a half, but in Section 2, it says the limits, it, it's related to part thereof, parcels of land, the limits of which in all cases shall be confined to the smallest area compatible with proper care and management of the objects to be protected. 2.5 million acres, Elias? <laughs> Makes you wonder a little bit, huh? It does. And you wonder because this is an outrage related to the regs and rules. It's a total bending of the rules. All presidents, well, most presidents have done it. You you know, it just gets to be kind of nuts. All right, so fire suppression. We know how this works. The BLM backfires. We just had it over in Harney County and the Hammonds over there. They got thrown into jail. They were setting backfires. At least it's what the original starting of this, the discussion was. We now find out that there's testimony that some of the BLM were setting backfires. But how does this fire suppression work right now? Explain this rural fire protection agency with the Jordan Valley, privateers and BLM. Well, in regards to our Rural Fire Protection Association... Uh, the state of Oregon has uh, statutes that say if you have a private interest in the public domain, you have the ability to defend that. So as cattle ranchers, not only do we have our animals out there, but we also have, because these fires are so big and they run so fast at times, so the long draw fire a few years back, it burned a million acres. Um, th- th- this is going to, these fires are uh, potentially damaging to our private property. So we have organized... Um, with our firefighting vehicles. We've gone through training programs. Uh, we have a certain amount of equipment. We all have two-way radios to stay in communication and a chain of command established. And working with the BLM, we are able to go out and actually fight fire in these public lands, and we do it with our own equipment, with our own time, um, and at our own expense without any reimbursement. Uh, be just simply because it's in our interest to do so. We think this land needs to be protected, and it's in our backyard, and we do it. So it's and it not the- only benefits us, but it benefits the wildlife, benefits the landscape. It, wildfire is the number one danger to sage-grouse habitat. And if we uh, lock this up, potentially, as a monument, and we deny access to roads and our ability to drive off-road or to set fires or to fight these fires, uh, all the work that's been done as far as managing sage-grouse habitat is going to go up in smoke, literally. Well, you wonder if you get some attention of some of the uh, 
um, you know, progressives on this sage grouse piece. You know, it's interesting. Now, the BLM, though, they know that, the you know, the RFPA, the Rural Fire Protection Agency, they appreciate your efforts. Is that right? Absolutely. No, we have a very good working relationship with the Vale District, and uh, they've greatly appreciated our work. And we, we, we've gotten to know the firefighters with, uh, within the BLM. They're the same guys coming back year after year, generally. The bosses are anyway. And a lot of times we'll go out on the fire, and they'll be pushing right out front. We'll come in behind and mop up, and it's a, it's a great network. Wow. We're visiting with uh, Elias... He's a rancher over in uh, Jordan Valley, Elias E. Guerin, and he's part of the Owyhee uh, Basin Stewardship Coalition. You want to get to the website, ourlandourvoice.com, and sign the petition. Uh, Elias, we've got to get to a break, and then we'll come right, you know, right back. There is more to talk about on this monument. Two point, I mean, it's, it's proposed at this point, but I want to talk about who's proposing it. Keen Footwear out of Portland, and Andy Kerr is lobbying in Washington, D.C., and it's just downright disgusting what they're doing because we've got a good thing going on so let's go to a, a break and come right back more on the sunrise show on news radio 880 kcmx after this good morning everyone 34 minutes after the hour welcome back to the sunrise show craig for again continuing with elias Aguirin, and he's a rancher over at Jordan Valley in eastern Oregon, Malheur County. We talked about the the special election that Malheur County had, and it was nine to one uh, it opposed to this Owyhee Canyonlands National Monument that that Kerr Footwear is putting out, of course, and their uh, Natural Desert resource council out there and they've been working on this andy kerr is a lobbyist that is in washington just lobbying away and elias talk more about this uh relationship with what you've seen over there and the, the good folks of malheur county and and how they're working to get the word out on this possible monument issue sure craig not We've uh, come together with a coalition called the Owyhee Basin Stewardship Coalition, set up a website, OurLandOurVoice.com, also a Facebook page, Our Land, Our Voice, and trying to get the word out about this monument designation and the negative effects that history shows us um, are potentially there. Um, but we know that we're going to get reduced access in this area. We're talking about two and a half million acres. This is unbelievable. It's got a few main roads in it, and the representative from the Oregon Natural Desert Association at a town hall meeting last fall in Adrian, Oregon, said that the main thoroughfares will be kept open, which means that all the two-track roads that provide the real access to all the areas folks want to get to are going to be closed down. Now, what, what does this mean to the, to the folks in Oregon who want to come visit this area? Uh, it, it means that you aren't going to be able to go out there to go fishing in a particular spot or hunting in a particular spot. And for us here in the Malheur County region, we're not going to be able to fight fires as we have in the past. Um, we've had these ridiculous wildfires that take in hundreds of thousands of acres, and we've been fairly effective in fighting certain, certain uh, fires in certain areas, but that's going to be taken away from us. Uh, the ability to manage noxious and invasive species as far as plants go. I mean, just picture going across two and a half million acres right. with your shovel and uh, take off walking, try eliminating invasive species out there. Right. Yeah. And also uh, water disbursement, something that hasn't been talked about. BLM has put in hundreds of miles of water lines out here for the purpose of watering cattle, but the wildlife reap all the benefit from that as well. All the birds and the rabbits and coyotes and antelope and uh, mule deer, elk, all these creatures get the opportunity to drink and uh, spread them throughout the landscape so they aren't concentrated right on the river or other water resources and competing for, those, uh, for, for that water and then potentially overgrazing in certain areas from the wildlife. You know, so that, that's something we're very concerned about as far as the actual impact on the land that is going to be negative, taking back decades of cooperative work between federal and state agencies and us, the locals who live and die here, and trying to make this the best resource that it is. You know, Elias, I'm very interested. The BLM and the water lines, talk about that. I have not heard about that. Would they shut them down? Would they, would, would they just let them go? What, what, and, and talk about how big, I mean, how, how many miles of water lines are there? 
I, I don't have that number, but, I mean, a solid guess is hundreds of miles, if not more than that. Wow. Um, th- these wells were put in. There, there aren't natural water resources out here. I mean, you folks over on that side of the Cascade, you might get 10 inches of rain in a week. Uh, we're lucky to get 10 inches in a year sometimes. So the water resources just don't exist. And so for better management of the land in terms of grazing cattle, the BLM 50 years ago started drilling wells and putting in underground water systems that run off gravity flow, and that disperses water throughout this vast area. And the wildlife benefits from this as well. And if the roads aren't there, then we're going to be looking at going out on foot or you know, doing everything by hand when it would be useful to have a piece of machinery like a, a backhoe or something to be able to fix a water issue to maintain those water resources for all the wildlife out on the on this two and a half million acres of public land. You know, Elias, this is really something because what we we haven't talked about mining rights either. And you're thinking 2.5 million acres. You know, it would affect the water rights, the grazing rights, and the mining rights. And the interesting thing to me is it's almost like the Affordable Care Act. Sign it, and then we'll read it to see what's in it. They want to make the wilderness, uh, you know monument and then they'll make rules and regs to fit the area you know dependent on you know the ranchers and the men and women the families that depend on this this land and as far as tourism what's really interesting to me is uh senator wyden talked about seven wonders seven days and listening to oregon businesses and he exclaimed you know travel oregon travel and tourism contribute to 10.3 billion dollars to the state's economy and a hundred thousand jobs in oregon depending on tourism in a wilderness monument what what are they going to do there i mean if they can't get people in and out and the, the water rights seem to be huge mining rights what what's happening with that as far as tourism goes um that based on so our organization the white basin stewardship coalition um has hired a public affairs organization and a sister company of theirs who does surveys sent out a statewide poll of 400 likely likely voters within the state of oregon and most folks said if it was designated a monument they wouldn't be any more apt to come visit it than they already are and the question we haven't had answered from the proponents of the monument is what will a monument designation allow you to do that you can't do right now? It's really going to be exclusive and taking away, exclusionary, taking away what we can already do. See, the devil's uh, in the details, it, it, you know, Elias. That's the thing. The devil's in the details. You wonder what what difference is it going to make, especially when you have BLM that is doing such a, they really have done a great job, haven't they? They are, and it's been in cooperation with the local local folks who use the land, and the, the, we've been able to maintain this resource and actually make it better than it is through our cooperation, and that ability is going to be taken away. A couple things to consider, Craig. The Grand Staircase Escalante National Monument in oh, Utah. Oh, boy. Congressman Walden just told us on Sunday at our town hall meeting in Jordan Valley that President Clinton denied and denied until the evening that he got on Air Force One that he was going to make that monument, and he got on Air Force One, flew out the next day, and designated it. That's how these things are done, possibly, within the dark of night. And the second thing to consider is these folks tell us, the proponents of the monument, Keen Footwear and the Oregon Natural Desert Association, that our activities will remain as they are. Well, just look at the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument in your folks' backyard. Oh, yeah. I read an article this morning on the Internet discussing that the BLM's talking about shutting down roads in the air. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're deciding Part of the reason for shutting down the roads is the money that was allocated for maintaining the roads was spent on increasing the size of the monument. So we know these monuments aren't going to get smaller, and they're going to be more restrictive over time. Like you say, the devil is in the details. Yep. Now, you are making a move that if if something like this is to occur, I mean, we all love our national parks. You think about it, Glacier National Park, uh, Yosemite, you've got Yellowstone, you've got Crater you know, Lake National Park. All We all enjoy these national parks and under the Antiquities Act and the National Parks and U.S. Park Service. But this seems to be a farce and political agenda only. And you you wonder, next, you want Congress to decide, not the president and his pen and his phone, correct? Absolutely. 
No, if it's the will of the people that we need further, uh, further regulations or further designation out here, then that's the will of the people. We live in a democratic republic, and that's how this issue, this is how this is supposed to work. I've been talking to my son about the American Revolution and how we fought England to get away from the power of a king, and here we are with a man who wants to act with the power of a king to designate this land where we live in a way that we do not wish. Exactly. You know what, Elias? I, I say they don't want us here. I've come up with that. I, I, you know, on the West, you know, in the you know, Cascades and whatnot, we grow the best timber in the world, and they don't want us harvesting our timber. So now what are we going to do? We're going to harvest marijuana. It's a sick joke. You know, but they're going to allow that. And so the timber industry has been kicked to the curb. Now you have the ranching industry and Congressman Baldwin. He's talking to me. He said, the plan is to get cattle off the range. You're thinking, wait a minute, how, how many head of cattle would it reduce? And, and, of course, industry would go away. Ranchers would go away. We don't have to get into the weeds about how many ranchers have been sent packing because they can't get their grazing rights or their water rights. We know next door over at Harney County, it's a major problem over there. When you look at an, uh, a large company like Keen Footwear and an organized group of environmental extremists like the Oregon Natural Desert Association, and they tell us that things are going to remain the status quo, but uh, you look at how hard they have pushed for this monument, and they tell us it's going to remain the status quo, you have to wonder what the ulterior motives are. Yeah. There's something underlying there. Exactly. And I wonder, I wonder if there isn't billions upon billions of dollars worth of mineral rights or, you know, uh, I had a National Guard lieutenant colonel come in and talk to me and he said, you know what, he just come back from Iraq. He said, Craig, water is the new oil. And I sat there. I can imagine. I sat there. there. Yeah. And I sat there and I looked at him and my eyes got big and he's exactly right. Water is the new oil. You think we've got the Hawaii, uh, you know, canyon over there and the river, uh, and then you're going to, like I said, the BLM is have to put in uh, wells and things. If they stop all of that, what's going to happen to the land? Boy, that's amazing. Absolutely. It's amazing. Well, Elias, thank you so much for coming on the program this morning. It's great to have you on. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Elias Iguera, and he's a rancher over at Jordan Valley over there in Malheur County in eastern Oregon. They're a Waihee Basin Stewardship Coalition. Get to their website, OurLandOurVoice.com. Sign the petition and be on there. Look out because the monument at 2.5 million acres, the president and oh, President Obama has not said he's going to do it. And uh, with a, Congressman Walden, has held Interior Secretary Sally Jewell's feet to the fire, but we're wondering if maybe this Council on Environmental Quality, the CEQ within the White House, may be having a rabbit up their sleeve. So we'll be watching for that. But, Elias, thanks for your time this morning. Thanks for the opportunity, Craig. You bet. You bet. Take care, and we'll be talking to you real soon. You bet. All right. Wow, that's just amazing to me, thinking about... I, I just it's already BLM land it's already BLM land and they're going to set aside what difference are the rules and regs going to be between existing BLM land now and the incredible working relationship of the men and women in Malheur County and the BLM and all the powers to be in the private land and grazing and everything else and what's going to change why why the big push it is a mystery but we will figure it out Sunrise with Craig on News Radio 880 KCMX. We're here. Stay here. We'll be right back.